This is the plaintiff, Nick Safar. He says he purchased a used car from the defendant, and it's been over seven months, and he still doesn't have a title. The defendant pulled a major scam on him. It's a shame there are people like this in the world, and he's here in the name of justice, seeking the return of his $5,000. This is the defendant, John Miller. He says he met the plaintiff through a mutual friend and gave him his code to buy cars at auctions. The plaintiff went online, picked out a car, and bought it. He never even saw the car until he brought it into his repair shop. How the plaintiff thinks he's gonna get five grand out of him today is quite laughable, and he thinks the judge will agree. He's accused of a shakedown. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the dock of the plaintiff bought a car from the defendant six months ago. Still doesn't have title, but the defendant says all he did was get a code to buy the car and has no responsibility. It's the case of, how's this for a title? You screwed me. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Mr. Safar. Good day, Your Honor. You are suing Miller Automotive Sales Incorporated, represented here by John Miller. You're the owner. For $5,000, you say you're actually out more than that? because he sold you a car that you can't get a title on. Tell me what happened. Yes. Uh, uh, we met uh, Mr. Miller sometime in October 2015. Uh, we were shopping for a car. He had some car in his stock, clear title and savage. We didn't like them. He gave us idea to go on a site and look for some other cars that he can bid for us and he add up a profit for himself and he gets the car and if he needs repair, he will repair it. And in the end, he inspect, gonna send it to inspection and get the title for us. And okay. I never get no title yet. All right, it's well tell me what past. happened instead. You found a car and then what? We found the car. How did you find the car? On the site. What does on the site mean? On a particular he, website? Yeah, it's a, it's a salvage insurance um, site. Okay, so then you tell him which one you like. What I like, and he, say, he said he's going to bid for, for it. He told us what is the price going to go for, and I agreed to it. Okay. And he bid, and he won. And he asked me next day to bring the money to uh, pay for the car so I can go pick it up. I went to the auction, and I picked up the car, and I bring it to him. He kept it in his shop two, three months for repair. He never got into it. He what gave... do you mean? He never, he never did any repairs? Never. So you brought the money over to the auction place and you paid for it? No, I paid him. He paid the auction. Oh, so he was physically at the auction place? No, he bets over his phone, on right. the phone, and he won the bid, and right. then I guess he had an account with them, so he asked me to bring the money. And to I, who? To him. Okay. So I paid him the money. So you paid him the money? Yes, 2300 right. and he went paid the auction. That you was didn't go with him to pay the fees. auction house? No. Okay, so, um, so after a couple months, I guess you get tired because he's not doing the repairs? Yes. And what do you do? And uh, we, we went talk to him, and he said, I'm afraid to touch the seat, torch the seat, because if carpet's going to go on fire, I can't do it, take it somewhere else. So I take it to a mechanic. I had it fixed put tire, oil change, get it ready for inspection. He made a date with the inspection, salvage inspection. He told me bring the car back. I took the car back to him. So he took it to, uh, supposedly to inspection and he texted me, he said within a week, you're gonna get the title. Month passed, two months passed, three months, four months, I keep talking to him. Every day is something. First, he was telling me somebody at Savage Place made a mistake, signed behind this 907, and then he's telling me he has a lien on the car, and then all, all kind of different stories. In the end, I got uh, frustrated, and I told him, if you don't take care of it, I'm gonna take you to court. And he said, we Who don't Who has the car right him. now? We have the car. Is your daughter driving it? Is this for your daughter? You can't drive the you car can't. because uh, the car cannot get titled and no registration. So the car's never even been driven? Once he sent me to someone to get a temporary tag and we drove it to the mechanic and to his shop, right. which temporary is about 45 days. Okay, Mr. Miller, what's going on? Um, everything is pretty much almost accurate, what he said, but besides the fact that when I first met him, it was from another dealer from the auction. 
And the dealer introduced me to him because I buy salvage cars. So he first started off that he wanted to ship cars overseas, blah, blah, blah. He wanted to buy into the business to buy cars as a new venture for himself. So then he came and said he wanted to buy a car for his daughter. So I gave him the password. I told him, well... Wait, why are you giving him a password? Well, so he can log on the auction. You can't, why, it's why a dealer's you... auction. You can't get on the auction without a password. It's a dealer's okay, auction. Okay, because you wanted him to I'm do the dealer. shopping. Yeah, because he's and buying... And figure out what you want, okay? Yes, he's going to pick out the car that he wants. I told him it's going to be a $300 fee. That's what I charge. Okay, so up, basically, up from whatever it is that you get yes. at the auction. So I'm not looking at him as a customer. This is like we're... I'm sorry, what is, how is he not a customer if you're charging him? Well, because it's, it's, if, I, if it was a customer, then I would have the car in my possession. I would fix the car, then I would sell it when it's done, when the title is in front of me. I wouldn't have a customer and drag them and tell them, oh, you got to wait two months well, for the why title. why did you have this customer do it? Because we wasn't as a customer. He came to me as a business partner. He wants to be in the business. For him to be able yeah, to Yeah, but go, he wasn't in the business. He was buying a car for his daughter. Yeah, well, this is one aspect. He wanted to buy the car for the daughter. Then he bought... The first car was the Nissan. Who did the bidding on the car? I bid from the phone. He told if me... If you bid from the phone, yeah, then he, what? Well, he told me what to go up to. He told me to go up to $2,000. The car did 1700 so I called him. I said, Nick, the car did 1700 Bring the money because I have to get him a check. Get him a check. He and gives he, you and he the gave, money. And he gave me then the $300 you take the money to the auction. And you take it to the auction house. Yeah. How is it that you're not, what is it you're trying to say? You well, can't get sued because you're not involved in this? How could you no, be no, any no, more I'm involved not, in it? I'm not saying I'm not, I can't get sued because I'm not involved. What I'm saying is that he came to me as he wants to be involved with the shop. So what? Okay, uh, this dude uh, does repairs on a car without ever getting the title. Is that a smart thing to do? Doesn't sound like a very smart thing to do now. Okay, let's try it again. Is it a stupid thing to do? Pretty stupid. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? Stupid. Without I mean, a because? Because he doesn't have a title. He's, he's not really... He may never get the title. Right. So he <laughs> did all this work for no reason. No kidding. Going inside the courtroom. Something has gone wrong. Terribly wrong. There's no title. He can't drive it. Yeah. Who's going to be responsible for that? Him? Well, at the auction, he knows all the rules because he buys crash cars before. This is not his first uh, rodeo. He, this is, he goes from different people like myself, and he buys different cars. He ended up at me. So at the auction, I have a disclaimer that tells you when you buy a salvage car from an auction. Yeah, but he didn't buy a salvage car from the auction. You did. Why is there a problem with the title? Um, the auction can't find a paper. The car went to the auction five different times. Then the auction should be giving back everybody's money. No, they have a disclaimer that you buy a car from them. It's as is, whereas, and that's it. Is your, is your, I mean, it says buy it your own and What risk. if it's a stolen car? What is the problem? Because this, this should be easier to fix than it's looking here. Is, how does one fix the problem that we have here? Well, I went to the auction twice, and they looked for the paper that they're missing. Okay, so, so they, they're missing the paper. We've established that. Then what does a person do when they're in this position? Me? If no, not, I don't want to hear how it's, it's somebody else's problem. What I want to hear is what does a person do to solve this? How is this solvable? It's not. So what happens? Somebody has to torch the car? Yeah, well, like I said, if it was my, if it was my car. Yeah, okay, like if it's your car, what would you have done? I would, I would buy two, three other cars and use this one for parts, being that I can't use it for anything else. So, That's what I so would do. So seriously, what you're telling me is that the car cannot be used as a car? I mean, it could be, uh, you could put a lien on it. And a go lien on it? Yeah, it could be a lien, and then that would supersede the auction paper that's missing. What does that mean? Do fraud, or is that... No, the car is, is lien. It's parked on his property. It's left there. You put a lien on it. New York yeah, State that, lien. That's that's bogus. He bought it. He didn't. It's, he can't pretend. He put a lien. This car was left on my property. You're the guy who left it there. You can't lean and pretend you don't know that property. So yeah, that would be fraud. You're so is there a legitimate way to legitimize the car? Uh, not far as I know, no. Then it's your problem. It's on your letterhead. You're the one who does the the work with that auction house. You're the one whose company is used. You can't divorce yourself from this just because you gave the guy your password. That doesn't work that way. What I care about is whether or not Mr. Safer was made his own deal with the auction house or whether you were making a deal with the auction house. And that deal implies that if it, you sell a car, it can be used as a car. Not that it's parts, but that it's a car. But when it doesn't, it's not able to be right, then you are the middleman. Whether you made it $300 or $3, I don't care. It's your company that bought the, the salvaged car. And your company, when it sells a car to him or his daughter or anybody else, is saying it's a car. There's very, if he said, ah, oh, the, ra the radiator has to be replaced, the transmission's bad, we wouldn't be talking about this. But what we're talking about is whether or not it can even be a car. If it doesn't have a title and he can't register, he can't insure, he can't do this, it's not a car, okay? 
Correct. So you're going to have to fix it. And if you can't fix it, and it sounds like you can't, then you're going to have to eat it. So based on what I've heard, my verdict is for the plaintiff. The car will make arrangements now. The car needs to be returned to him so he can use it for parts or whatever because I am making him purchase it back from you. And yes, I agree. All the money you've spent on the car waiting for it to be legitimized is also going back in your pocket to the maximum amount that the state allows, which is $5,000 verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the plaintiff gets the $5,000 he was seeking. You understand the judge's decision? Oh, yeah, for sure, I understand. Um, I'm glad for him, you know, that he can move on and his dog could drive or buy another car. Well, he can't use yeah, that yeah, car. Buy, buy You're going to get it back. Yeah, I get it back. And what do you do with it? I use it for parts. Okay, good enough. Right. Thank you. Thank tough you. lesson for you. Yeah. Boy, you know, this is tough. I think anybody watching this would feel sorry for you to go, get a car yes. uh, and then you just can't do anything with it, right? No. Stuck. It was some... Experience. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Well, listen. Congratulations. Thank you're you. going to get the money. Thank now you go get another car. Yes. You. yes. You're going to go to auction to get it. No. 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 You learned no. a lesson. Be learning. Congratulations. Thank you. Good Thank lesson you. indeed. You. Harvey, what do you think about this case? Okay. You know, we talk about title a lot in these car cases where you don't have it. It doesn't have to be mentioned in the deal. Title is what proves ownership. If the seller doesn't deliver title, it is a defective deal from the get-go, and as a result. The deal is off and the person who buys it gets their money back.